Well, welcome everybody to another session in our Women Lead Online Forums brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. I'm Patty Vargas, I'm your host today. And today we are in the ladies room. And you know what that means. It's that place where women talk about things that we might not say just anywhere, right? And things that we can only say to one another because, well, because we all have shared experiences. So this is our opportunity to talk about it, maybe vent some frustrations, uh, give advice to one another, and then come away with some new ideas or validation. So in the ladies' room, we like to say we go there. Now, our session today is going to last for about an hour. If you've joined with video, you'll be able to see our panelists and our attendees alike. Questions and comments are always welcome. And if there's something you'd like to contribute anonymously, just put it in the chat to me and I will share it for you. So our topic today in the ladies room is body shaming. Like, what is it? Why do we do it? Where did it come from? Do boys have this problem? What is it about body shaming? And I want to introduce my esteemed panel of special guests here today. So first of all, we have Deborah Thorne, America's CEO, not CEO, CEO. So wave your hand, Deborah. Okay. And Deborah's a coach who helps motivated women 50 and over design and execute strategic plans within six months for living their lives next chapters as they envision without dependence on others. Next, we have Jose Brisbois of We Can Style. Uh, Jose is a personal fashion expert for women speakers who want to look chic, confident, and credible with an authentic signature style so they can draw a lot more ideal clients. So wave your hand, Jose, so everyone can see you. Next, we have Michelle Berquist, who is the CEO of Connected Women of Influence, the leading private invitation-only association that was chartered exclusively for women, business owners, executives, and professionals who lead people, organizations, and teams. And it gives them the opportunity to connect, collaborate, and cultivate a vast network of high-level affiliations and relationships. Wave your hand, Michelle. Yay. And then last but not least, we have Diana Ramirez of Bustles on Wheels, which is a mobile bridal and special occasion alteration service. And you're definitely going to want to ask her about their booty pop service. So wave your hand, Diana. <laughs> That's a new one. I didn't know that. How's that for an intro, everybody? There you go. So we are going to, we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about body shaming. And, you know, I think if, um, if you're anywhere over the age of two, maybe, you know, you've probably experienced this in some, some capacity, you know, something has been said to you, uh, some way that you've been made to feel. Um, somewhere along the way, you know, this, this has probably happened to all of us, or we have observed it happening to others. So I thought it would just be a really great topic for us to discuss in the ladies room. Uh, I hope you've all got your favorite beverage and you're, you're ready to, to just go there. So who wants to start? Who, who has an anecdote or a story or an experience to share? I don't really have one. Okay. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Well, I, because for me, I think the whole reason why I do what I do is exactly because of that, because of something that happened to me when I was a little girl. And um, what happened is I have three sisters and in my family, one of them is my twin. And I was labeled, the, my nickname was Chubby. That's how I was called. Just because my twin sister was skinnier than me. And so I definitely grew up feeling like I was not pretty, I was not good enough, you know, all of these things. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, to the point where my one of my older sisters, I mean, to her defense, she was on the wrong medication for epilepsy at the time. But she literally one day told my mom in front of me, hey, uh, why don't we send Josie to prison so this way she won't have any choice but to lose weight. And so... 
so since then I really like always felt like oh my gosh there's really something wrong with me and it's been like a journey to you know accept myself and all this and and this is why uh, fashion has played such a big big role in my life because it's helped me so much yeah. to feel better about myself and to feel more confident and I've used it my entire life to to kind of heal Mm -hmm. nice. Can I comment on that? Can we comment? Yeah. yeah. I'm like, seriously, Jose, it's so funny because like just as a tie off on that and as like a, 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 a tag on, it's interesting to me, a woman like you would say that. And it's like, an, and I, cause you're gorgeous. Know that, own that, Thank you already you. know that. But I think here's what's interesting about the body shaming. It's also, you know, and I'll get into my stuff later if we get into it, but I'm like, but there's body judging, right? When, like, when you said that, not knowing that about you and I see how you carry yourself and how you interact with people and what you do, I'd be like, no way, man. And you never, I mean, it's never arrogant yeah. for you, but just confidence. And I would have never known that. And yet, you know, looking at who you are today, I would imagine not only is there body shaming, but women judge, right? Based yeah. on how you look now, whether it is not shame, but even judging. I think that's horrible that we do that as women. We judge the book by its cover. Wrong, yeah. Ola. Totally. Mm -hmm. totally, totally. And I like to say, like, you know, my mission is to help women gain their confidence back from all of the bullies that they've encountered in their life. And a lot of the time, it's other women. And a lot of the time, it's it becomes ourself. We become our worst, you know, enemy. So, yeah. Yeah. Cool. I'm true. just going to say, it's like, I grew up, I love my name, but it was like, Shelly Belly. <laughs> <laughs> like you know you grow up and they come up with other names and yeah i don't know it's like you know the hey, um, how would you like to be fatty patty Are you serious? <laughs> oh my gosh is that how you were called i was called fat oh there's a whole song that goes with it too oh, oh my oh, yeah. god and from the time that kids knew how to make up rhymes and stuff like that it was yeah i was always fatty patty didn't matter if i weighed Five pounds, fifty pounds, five hundred pounds. I was fatty patty. That's <laughs> terrible. I'm just like, I don't know. I don't I know. know. I know. You know, I'm curious, like Diana, with what you do with the wedding dresses, I can only imagine the mindset of what you're dealing with with women, you know, and you're you're all during their their bridal gowns. It's like it's gotta be head you know, therapy, part therapy. Is that what you do? <laughs> it it is, yeah. I see this every week. I see it every week where brides themselves are talking down to themselves because, you know, they feel fat or, you know, they don't like the back fat or, you know, their arms jiggling, um, the bat wings. I think someone called it a bat wing. And I was like, what? How? Bad. Um, but just recently, this is about a month ago, I was doing a final fitting for a girl and she was, um, in a side, in a dress that was just much too large for her. And, you know, she purchased it and I had to shrink it down. And at the end, it was fine. And she looked amazing. But her mother-in-law was there at her final fitting. And she said, I'm so glad you got this dress that is more coverage and is just much more figure flattering for you. And it took everything <laughs> to not say anything, to not slap this woman. Um, and as soon as she walked out of the room, I turned to my client and I said, you know, you can wear anything you want. You're freaking beautiful. You know this, right? And she said to me, thanks. And she said, I don't really take into account what she says, but it does hurt. Sure. So... Every time, and it's usually always the mom or the mother-in-law that says something so mean to these women, you know? Um, sometimes it could be a sister, but most of the time it's a grandma, it's an aunt, it's something. So we, you know, I, I know this now because I see it all the time. It comes from an older generation, you know, someone that's, you know, that, and I think we kind of become desensitized 
you know, that we do it to ourselves now, you mm -hmm. know, that we're just like, oh, I'm having a fat day or, you know, like I just mm -hmm. don't, don't feel good today, you know? Yeah. And it's like, oh, okay, well, yeah. Yeah. you're amazing and you're alive, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, let's go with that. Do you think kids today have, I mean, it's almost like we've taken it away from face to face and it's now all that on the online. You that's, know, that's where the bullying comes in. It's like, I don't know. I remember one of my friends telling me about her daughter and she comes home in tears, you know, and it's like, she's like, what, what, what? And you know, the, the, whatever. Okay. I don't remember if it was Instagram or whatever it was, but it was blowing up over somebody saying something and then they took it and it was supposed to be funny. Um, and it was over, I, I, I'd heard the term before, but over the fact that they called her ankle cankles, you know, or the fact that she kind of had, you know, kind of puffy, puffy ankles. And I was like, why would kids do this? But she was just devastated. And like girls have actually committed suicide based on that. I mean, yes. I don't I haven't known anybody, but you hear it on the media and you go, oh my God. I don't know. I, I don't know if we have any experts here on that, but it's on. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> you know, <laughs> okay. So I'm going to jump in a little bit because I've been sitting here like taking notes and it, I guess really and truly it breaks my heart that we are still there. Yeah. Uh, I've been a large person since I was seven and I'm like, okay, as you're talking, we're bringing up a lot of stuff and our kids really haven't been taught how to properly deal with it. And so bullying does take place. But the one that stuck out with me most was a moment ago, uh, Diana, when you were talking about older folks and the aunts and all that the last thing one of the last things my aunt said to me she's in her 90s and I had taken my mother over to visit her they'd had a nice visit I'm walking out with her and she looks at me and she says I thought you were gonna lose weight you're fatter than I've ever seen you in life and I stopped because you know what flooded through my head is, you know, I've heard you say that stuff my entire life. And lady, I am over 60 years old. And I spun around to let her, I mean, like, oh, I was going to give it to her. And I went, Deb, come on, for real. She's 96 90. years old. <laughs> Get in your car and drive off. Okay. And I just, I stood there and I shook literally. And my mother said, are you okay? I said, just get in the car get in the car and I drove off but I thought oh my god you have been saying this to me for 60 years you don't get to do that lady you don't know me like for real you don't know me like that and, but you know that's kind of what we grow up with and my way of combating it was I did beauty pageants and fashion shows for plus size women and girls so that you had the opportunity to really have other people tell you how beautiful you were. Mm -hmm. But I can give you example, because I'm telling you, I was writing it down, example after example of people thinking that it's okay to say or do anything and that, you know, we're supposed to shy away. It doesn't usually work that way with me anymore, for real. No, and, and uh, it shouldn't either. We have to speak up. I, I have this reputation in my family. Um, and other places where I worked, where I just, I'm the nicest, rudest person. <laughs> and I'm okay with it. I am okay. If you are being disrespectful, it, you know, in the Latino community, you, ha you have to respect your elders. That's just the way it is, you know? And I, I feel that this is in, in, I feel like in any community, you do, you have to respect your elders and really treat them like gods, which is okay because, you know, they're your, your parents, they're your grandparents, they're your aunties and uncles. But one day my dad said to me, I've had multiple health related um, issues. And my dad said to me, um, he said to me, you've gotten really fat and like, you need to work on this. Mm. And he said it out of a place, not making fun of me, but concerned for my health which I understand. And I said to him, dad, would you love me less because I'm fat? And he said, no, of course not. And I was like, then don't bring it up. Mm -hmm. Like it's none of your business. Mm -hmm. And he was like shocked, but at the same time, not really because he raised me 
to be independent. He raised me to speak my mind and to speak up. And that's what I do. I did it with my grandparents. I do it with my mom. I do it with all of my siblings. Mm -hmm. um, I do it with clients all the time. <clears throat> Can't, you know, if someone hurts your feelings, say something. Mm -hmm. Don't, you know, just be like, hey, don't talk to me like that. What's wrong with you? You know, um, I've also uh, said, um, one of my comebacks was also like, does that make you feel better? Mm -hmm. You know, like, do you need a hug? Did your parents hug you enough when you were little? Like, what's wrong with you? Why do you speak to people this way? And Did they drop you on your head when you were little. <laughs> <laughs> they just cut people will just stop in their tracks. Like, I don't even know why I said that. Like, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. A lot of the times they'll just say something like, oh, sorry. And just shy away because you need to shame them. They are body shaming you and you need to shame them. Like, it's not okay to shame other people. Who do you think you are? What is wrong with you? Um, it's worked for me every time. <laughs> it's amazing. I think it's, you know, I think also, and I love that because I think too, for women, like how I've always dealt with it, you know, Debbie, you were talking about how since you were seven, you know, and your God, God love your grandma, right? Was your grandma? Or my uh, aunt. <laughs> like, you know, they just have to own that age and they'll say what they don't even, they can't help themselves. They don't know. But I think one, one thing for me and how I've always dealt with it and, and I, and I've been um, chastised for it is I try to deal with it with humor. You know what I mean? It's like, I mean, I know I'm a big girl. It's like, I'm not stupid. Right. But I also know I always try to dress up professionally when I show up. It's like, I, I want conservative, but you know, and I'm going to, I know Monique, I know you're muted, but you're in the fashion industry and Jose, you deal with that. And, and Bobby, I know you're kind of in the fashion space on with us, but it's interesting to me that people that design clothes for lay, let's say not the size two person, why can't there be like, like, I don't want to look like a sofa walking down a street. You know what I'm saying? It's like some of the materials and the things that they design are just, you just go really and I'm like I learned long ago Patty I know you're laughing but it's like I just feel like you put on something with all those bright prints and I go no no and I've had the hardest time I know what I want I want you know solids I don't want any of this like busy patterns and stuff but Monique you're in the fashion industry I, I just yeah like, I, I, I'm listening to all of you guys and I have be dying on the other end. Yeah, right? no, no. I just like, I listen. Um, I, there's so many stories. Uh, this is a big deal in, in my world. Um, but also with me and my clients, but going aside from what I do, that's a separate, a separate, uh, there's two sides of the, to the token. Um, aside from getting body shaming from, uh, older adults, there's also commercialism everything's on social media young girls like my niece she's like 11 years old panic attack anxiety hives chest pains because she doesn't feel like she looks right and this little girl is a twig like tiny um and i see it all the time so what my way of it has to, we have to do, a, it has to be a conscious change, societal change, but that's going to take a while. Yeah. So for me, it's accept who I am, dress good for me. Like if you are a size 12, fit a size 12, don't fit a size 10. You're going to look fabulous if you, if you wear the clothes that fit you and you wear what and how the style you. Then also compliment a woman. Like, damn, you're looking good, babe. Like, you're rocking it. So that's that's a that's an, uh, uh, always good to do that because you slowly start changing. And I think that right now it's a conscious. People are realizing that it's just a this is a concern. So I think that we'll slowly weed out these like the older people say, "Why wow, you're fat? You gained some weight from last week. Did you gain some weight?" I mean, you, the, my aunts were like, they, they would say it in Spanish. They'd be like, oh, you look, you look like you're, did you gain 20 pounds or something? And I'm like, you know what? You know what? This is what I say to them. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, um, so going back to, to that, my, and on my on work side, uh, I have changed people's, I do fit 
uh, I do do custom work for larger sizes. I am going to do a, a line specifically for plus sizes in particular in my particular brand. But I'm also, Michelle, you're going to like this. I'm developing a separate brand and it's, it's going to be for business women that is any size, but custom made. It's kind of like men, men right now have all these ready to wear or made to measure clothing, but no one, there's no women having like, where do we go as a tailor? Where, right. do, where do women go? Okay, I want a kick-ass suit in a size 16. Where do you go? There's no made to measure. Like men, there's so many brands out there for men to go and get a made to measure suit. That's not going to cost $3,000. Mm -hmm. And, and um, anyway, so there's, there's just so many stories I could tell you about this whole topic. It's, it's a huge thing for me um, because I, I, I embrace the curves. So I get women that want to cover up and I'm like, rock it, use your power. You know, it, it's funny. Cause we, we talked about the older generation and we talked about, um, some of the kids shaming each other, you know, like on social media and stuff. And, and I totally agree with you, Monique, that this is going to take time to change, you know, and, and we've all seen the, the Dove uh, body so bad, you know, where they're using real sized women and, and a lot of other uh, marketing things are coming along like that. But it is, it's going to take time to weed out this you know, generations of, of shaming like that. And, you know, my, my personal story is, um, and some of you guys know this, my, my mom was, um, was always on myself and my sister on us about our weight and constantly on us about our weight. And like I said, it didn't matter what I weighed. It was, it was always too much. And, you know, to the point of, uh, taking our picture from behind so we could see how fat we looked and um, never leave the house without looking at yourself in the mirror from behind to see what you look like. And, you know, the first time that she put me on amphetamines, on diet pills, I was only 14. Oh my and God. so when I had a daughter um, and my daughter is now 34, um, so that gives you an idea of the, the span, you know, of time here. I made up my mind I was never going to talk to her about her weight. I might talk to her about exercise. I might talk to her about heart health, but I was never, ever going to mention her weight. And to this day, I mean, out of, you know, now that we're both grown, grown ass women together, you know, we still don't, I don't ever talk about her weight. And, and I think it's just so important that we, that we recognize what is out there and then with our language and the things that we choose to to talk about uh that we make a conscious effort to direct our conversation in a way that is more socially conscious and better for for all of us you know because we the the little girls that were shamed grew up to be big women you know who turn around and shame one another and it's it's ridiculous you know what and, and I think we all fall into that sometimes of like, my God, did you see what she was wearing? What, what was she thinking? You know, kind of thing. But there's got to be, you know, change always starts at the grassroots, right? Change always starts with, with us. And so, you know, with women making a conscious effort of this is not okay. We're not, we're not going to do this anymore. We're not going to play into this anymore. But I'll tell you, there's another, like I, I worked in, cause I, my corporate career was in commercial banking for those of you that don't know. And I remember one of my really good friends who was absolutely positively like almost six foot tall, blonde hair, blue eyes. I mean, just absolutely gorgeous. Right. What was interesting to me, I mean, I'm dealing with my own mindset, self-talk, you know, feeling like I walk in and I got the power suit on and the whole bit. She literally, and this is Josie, I'd love to hear this because she was so stunningly gorgeous that she would literally, these were her terms, not mine. She would go, I need to ug myself up. I need to ugly myself up. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like she went and got super like, made, like smart glasses to make her look smarter, but she really didn't need them. You know, she always made sure she was very conservative, even though she was quite large chested, which was another like thing. Like she was a you know, Betty Boop kind of thing, but she was literally made fun of, you know, by men. And this was a different age, right? This was in the late eighties, early nineties in corporate America, that it didn't matter if there were sexual harassment laws. It's like men would say shit under their, you know, breath and even women too. I mean, women were the worst. 
Yeah. Like, I mean, she was smart. She was capable. She was stunningly gorgeous, you know, but she felt she had to, from a, a body, you know, kind of shaming thing, she felt she had to downplay her looks. And so I'm curious, Jose, with you, like, do you see women in corporate America that try to do that? Because it was, I couldn't believe it. I was just like, but when I saw men in a meeting that would say something like a sexual innuendo, and I knew she heard it, I heard it, but nobody addressed it. It, it was awful. It's almost like the other extreme, knowing that I'm sitting there going, oh my God, I'm feeling my fat today, you know, a little bit, but you know, that's another whole subject, but mm -hmm. it was just two polar opposites. Jose, you're muted. Oh, you're muted, baby. Hi. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, you, you see that, especially with engineers, um, the biotech industry, the uh, high tech. Like, I have a friend who works in high tech. She says she wears fake glasses as well. She can't wear dye her hair too blonde, even though she really likes it, because mm. you know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. like... It's sad that you you have to be a certain way to be seen the way you should be seen. Like, yeah. And then the engineers, they can't. Well, right now I'm really excited because I'm actually working with an engineer that she wants to break those barriers and like make me look cool and feminine. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> Because she's she she's tired of you know this whole stigma and that they have to do this and she's like I'm gonna wear a skirt I'm you know what I mean so yeah. I'm very excited to help her out with that yeah That's I have I have a colleague who is um, she is six feet six foot two and probably weighs uh, probably 120 pounds she's she's incredibly slender and has been an athlete her entire life. So there is like not a single ounce of body fat on this woman. And we were talking one day about body shaming and, and the whole thing. And she said, do you know how many times a day people think it's perfectly all right to come up to me and comment on how thin I am? And why don't you go eat a cheeseburger? And you know, something disrespectful when she says, I. I'm this way. This is what I am. You know, I'm, I'm athletic. I, I eat like a horse. I, I'm just, it is what it is. But she was as offended as somebody who would, you know, walk up to you, you know, like you were saying, Diana, Hey, did you put on some weight, you know? Yeah. And so, but we think, Oh, that's okay. It's all right to talk about somebody's thinness, but not, you know, not talk about their, their heft, you know, if you will. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's part of the problem is that we have to get in the habit of calling people out. It's not okay to comment on somebody personally, period. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're a beautiful person, whoever you are, you're that beauty. And we started with little kids. Um, I used to have, uh, my grandson has autism. And so we would go for meetings and I had to break the teachers. Oh, he's so cute. You know what? Don't tell him that. I don't want to hear it. That and $2.50 will buy him coffee in some restaurants. Let's talk about what kind of education we're going to give this young person. I don't want and and one of the teachers even went so far as to say, "Miss Thorne, I know you don't want us to say it, but he's so cute. I say if you know I don't want you to say it, then stop saying it. Don't say it again." Okay? And I I think, you know, we really have to encourage children and teach them in our house, you're not allowed to make fun of anybody about anything that they have no control over. So you can't talk about how tall somebody is, how short they are, fat, thin, light, dark, the color of their eyes, the color of their hair. These are all things people have nothing to do with. We do talk about people who have bad attitudes because you can fix that, okay? People who uh, approach life from a you know a negative place you can fix that but all of these other things that we have come to you know name calling of any kind is not okay you know i do conflict resolution and helping people even parents adults helping them understand it is just not okay to comment on other people you know where do you get that when you guys were talking i was laughing because you say you know step up i was at an event and I went to get some dessert off the table and this male voice behind me said, girl, you know, you don't need that. 
And I turned <laughs> around because I just knew it was some guy I knew. And, and, you know, we were friends. And I turned around and it was a total stranger. I said, who the hell are you? <laughs> you don't even know me. Okay, so whatever made you say that, you tell that devil, it's about to get your ass whipped right up in here. And my girlfriend comes up, she goes, what's the matter? I said, this man is coming. No, he said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, you're not sorry. You're sorry you got caught. I'm not that girl. And I, I just couldn't believe this is a total stranger. I don't even know you. But it's okay for you to comment on what I'm eating or not eating. No. Mm -mm. So no. I, I've actually had that happen to me as well. I was at a buffet and I was at the dessert and I, um, I was just looking, right? Like, which one am I going to get, right? This, this is it. It's a buffet. I'm lactose intolerant. I got to choose wisely. This isn't something that happens all the time. And someone behind me said, uh, leave, leave some, leave some dessert for the rest of us is what she said. Oh and I turned around and it was a skinny woman. <laughs> and, uh, and I said, there's no dessert for skinny bitches. And she oh. was like, oh, like offended. And I was like, what? You can wow. say something, but I can't. And my entire family <laughs> there, by the way, uh, you know, we're celebrating someone's whatever. And people were like, oh my God, she's going to get into a fight. You know, but I'm okay. like, no, I'm a lady. I'm not going to fight, but I have a mouth and I am going to speak up. And by the way, I was with my 18 year old niece who is six feet tall and a size 16, 18. And wow. she was like, oh my God, someone just said this. By the way, her mother has shamed her her entire mm -hmm. life. So I, so, you know, she hangs out with me and I'm the loud mouth and I'm like, no, you're not going to take it. It doesn't matter. You know, if she, if someone gave birth to you or whatever it is, you need to speak up. You need to say something. Mm -hmm. And she saw me doing that. And she was like, I thought we were going to fight. We're not going to fight. I'm a lady. It's not going to happen. What kind of stupid women do that? I'm like, seriously, I just can't even, I don't know. I mean, sorry, I'm just aghast. People well, think that it's okay to say whatever because yeah. our society tolerates it. And it's the same thing like with bullying. We have to say as a society, we're not going to tolerate it. When you see it happening to someone else who isn't capable of speaking up for him or herself, it's our responsibility, those of us who can, to speak up. Okay, you know, because they can't. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm with well, you here. And, and the <laughs> other thing is, the other thing is, is that most of the time um, when somebody says something, they're saying something because it's a fear that they have. Yeah. And mm -hmm. they're putting they're putting their own stuff out there and putting it on you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, well, but where? Why is it not that we are not don't do not feel entitled to love ourselves? Okay, and to suit up and walk out with that suit of armor on. I love Marissa Peer because she has a theory that when someone says something to you that you don't want to hear or they're not entitled to say, that you deflect it by saying thank you for sharing. Cool. I like that. No, it, I don't. Totally, it, it totally deflects it because you don't take it in. Yeah. If you deflect it, you're not taking it in. And if you don't take it in, then there's no way that it can negatively impact you. Hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, it's really important for us to suit up. Yeah. And put on that, put on that suit of armor that says, you know what? You can say whatever you want, but that's not who I am, and that's not how I'm going to judge myself by what you say. Yeah. Wow. Bobby, I want to respectfully disagree. With all respect, I want to disagree. You don't get to say whatever you want to me. I don't care who you are. I and didn't say that. I didn't no, say no. that. I'm what talking, I, okay. I'm talking about, I'm talking about what how you feel about yourself no no one is entitled no one is entitled it's not polite beyond everything else it's not polite 
you speak when spoken to, or if you are a friend or you're in a conversation and you get invited to, to, uh, you know, but to pass judgment on someone else that you don't even know, or that you know slightly, you know, that is not okay. So I'm, I totally agree with you. But yeah, I'm and, saying and I that think that's what we I'm saying. need to, we need to arm ourselves. We need to arm ourselves so that those things don't pinch. When I was a kid, I had really curly hair. I still do, but curly hair was not in fashion. You know, so people made fun of me for curly hair. I developed late, so the boys would make fun of me and say, why don't you at least get somebody to punch you so you'll be swollen for a while? You know, I mean, so there's plenty, there's plenty of owies out there, right. right, for us to be pinched. So the thing of it is, is that how do you, you can't stop everybody from saying, thinking, and doing what they do, but you can own, you're, you're only in charge of you. I, like I think what and I, I guess what I was disagreeing with is I'm not going to thank you for sharing. You know, I, what I need you to do is stop talking. Mm -hmm. And yeah. when well, I work you know, with younger people and you're trying to help them navigate, if I say to you, if you say to an immature person, be it an adult or a child, thank you for sharing, they don't get the hint. They continue to share. Well, yeah, I was just telling you for your own good. No, no, no. Let's now, find a is, way to stop this that. Is, this is adults. If you've never watched Marissa Pierce, um, any of her TED Talks or any of the other stuff, I highly, highly recommend it because, you know, it's just super logical, you know, and my husband and I have been married almost 30 years and our relationship saver is your right because you know what? Some things are just not worth fighting about. So, you know, this is for adult conversation and adult situations. I'm not suggesting that it's, you know, universal, but I've found it to be, you know, very helpful for me because I just deflect it and I don't buy in. I don't have an argument. I, it doesn't pinch. It doesn't hurt. I say, thank you for sharing. And I walk away. Well, I think what I like about what you're, what you're saying, Bobby, is that it's the deflecting piece of it. You know, it's kind of like in the South, you know, we used to say, bless your heart. <laughs> and everyone knew we did not mean bless your heart, but it <laughs> meant, you know, we're not going there. We're just not going there. And, and there was a, a kind of a slap down in, involved, that, but it was, it was polite and it was pretty clear to everybody around you that, hey, you're the, you're the idiot and, and I'm not taking it in. So I like, that that you're saying about not allowing that to come in and, and invade your your personal space, you know. See, I I mean I agree. I think the thing that drives me crazy most with women and this body shaming is that how even when we get a compliment from somebody, we have to downplay it. Like I mean, I think there's this point of where I mean, I use it, but it's even just take the damn compliment, you know, when somebody says, oh my God, you, you look amazing today or, you know, your skirt, it's like, what will a woman do? It's like, to go, oh, I just pulled this thing out of the closet, you know, or, oh, it's like, you know, yeah, it's just, it's, it's nothing. It's old. I just put it on. I mean, it's like, just own it and go, you know what? Damn, I look great. I feel good, you know, but you can't say that because women, then get judgy. I think that's the part that bugs me the most on that, especially in business as well. We just cannot seem to take the compliment. And I think it was Monique, you were saying like, we can't own our power, you know, just say thank you. And so then people go, wait, aren't you going to discount yourself on it? Yeah. Can, I wonder uh, there, there's, um, I, mean, I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but would you, whenever you take a picture and you, and you say, Oh, I wish I was, 10, 20 pounds, whatever, less. And then five, 10 years from now, you go back and you look at a picture and I swear to God, it happens. I tell my daughters, I go, I wish I was that and how much I thought I was fat then. And every time I go, realize how amazing you are right now, because I guarantee you, you're going to look back, you're like, I was looking pretty good. Mm -hmm. And I tell that to all, I, when I was teaching uh, my dancers, um, I was a size two. I had a 24 inch waist and I thought I was fat and I was so conscious and I went back to look at my pictures and I'm like, oh my God, I was tiny. And I thought in my mind, I was, I needed to lose more weight. And I think everybody always, we're never, we're never happy with where we are at the moment. And I think we need to change that, that we're happy 
inside outside and it's it and just acceptance that's that's well wouldn't wouldn't it be nice to enjoy the moment too because yeah, I, yeah. you know i i was sharing one time with a with a therapist <laughs> uh that i look back at vacations and it's like this was a good vacation because i was thin or this was mm. this was not such a great vacation because i was about 20 pounds overweight or you know and, and when you fluctuate back and forth like that that's pretty frequent you know that, that you look back on things like that and and i have some good friends from high school that we've looked back and talked about how we thought of ourselves when we were in high school and then you know here we are now in our 60s trying to come to grips with being okay with where we are and being happy with where we are and in terms of the way that you look and you're like for god's sake we're 60 wouldn't it be well i'd be on that but yeah we're in our 60s wouldn't it be nice to not be having this conversation anymore that i had when i was five and ten and 15 and 35 i mean for god's sake when does it end when when does when does this end yeah i wanted to go back to the compliment for a second because i was taught early on by a very very dear friend of mine to say thank you to compliments and don't back talk them because you know what when you back talk it you are discrediting the compliment mm -hmm. and you're discrediting the person who gave it to you mm -hmm. and you don't make them feel good so if you do that they're not going to compliment again because you've made them feel bad mm -hmm. right so if somebody says you look fantastic you say gosh thank you so much and you're going to feel better and they're going to feel better and then that is duplicatable yeah so and compliments are a big one and, and say it to people you don't know like i yeah. i love to like somebody on the street i'll say damn that is an awesome sweater or wow your hair is looking amazing today or you look incredible can you imagine yeah. i mean that just you, you know, made their like, day they stand up taller day. yeah yeah, they stand up taller they're noticed mm -hmm. you know you're noticing and that you know we know all know the law of attraction and energy you know and you look at what you're doing in the way of putting really good energy out there they're going to carry it forward and share it with other people you're going to carry it forward and share it with other people i mean that's how we change things yeah you know by doing what it is that we want to happen and perpetuating that so um Bobby, I hope, you're, I hope you're not driving. I'm sitting in my car in the car. going like this. Bond. And I'm thinking, who's steering the wheel? Right, <laughs> right. Well, I'm, I think, hey, Bobby, I, think you, I, I probably look are. like some kind but of I wanted goblin. to say, Bobby, you look lovely in the dark. Yeah, you <laughs> oh. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> look lovely in the dark, Bobby. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> She's in the witness protection program. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Actually, the car in front of me in the parking lot just turned their lights on, so that's why you can see me. <laughs> He's going away. <laughs> you twist on an old game. You know, I got to tell you guys, I want to talk about, this is for me, the elephant in the room. So we're talking about body shaming, right? And I don't know if you guys, because we got the whole Brady Bunch thing going on with all the pictures and everything. And I'm laughing because I don't know about you guys, but I keep looking, I keep looking at myself in my square and i'm like oh god i should go like this with my hair and you know <laughs> it up a little straighter and i keep looking at myself even though i'm listening to the conversation and i'm going oh my god i got lines here i'm just like totally picking myself apart but i and anyway i know we're recording this i'm a little embarrassed now but i'm just like seriously i'm going oh man look at that i'm like picking apart everything and i'm like i should just say you know what I'm feeling good today and not keep doing it's a good that. Good day. Myself, there you go. Right? Is anybody else doing that? Or oh, I always. Only I, yeah. You start these home. Zoom calls and you're always looking at yourself, you know, and so. I well, think, maybe in the next call you should do it in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's working for me. Here, what? <laughs> this is the way I want to go. <laughs> That's hilarious. I love it. Yeah, it's in the, the next ladies room will be in the dark. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I think um I think that uh that the way I was raised I was raised by my dad and and uh my brother and he was a single dad and uh he just didn't really like 
entertain a lot of like girl issues, right? Yeah. Like I'm fat or I'm this, you know, and my dad would say like, be happy that you're alive, you know, and you know, you have life, you survive. I, again, I was very sick as a kid, still sick as an adult, but I kind of grew up with that mentality that like, I'm just going to give thanks that I'm alive and that's it. You know, there's, there's no, you know, sure. Sometimes I, sometimes I'm like, oh, I wish I was a little thinner, but it doesn't bother me that much because I'm not doing anything about it. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I definitely don't pick myself apart. It's not, it's not healthy. Um, I am 100% grateful every single day and every day I give thanks that I'm still alive. So picking myself apart, no way. I give people compliments all the time. All of my clients, I tell them that they're beautiful. Um, because that's really how I feel. I feel that I'm beautiful. I think that I'm so cute, you know, and just so annoying. (laughs) Um, And I just want to be happy all the time and spread love all the time because there's just no point in being sad. You know, we deal with disease and death every single day. Every day, someone you know is diagnosed with something, you know, and it's like, I'm picking myself apart over, you know, my wrinkles, but like this person over here is losing an arm because of diabetes. You know, like, you know, your priorities, your priority is like to love yourself no matter what. And that's what I try to do with all of my clients, with myself, with my mom, with everyone, everyone I meet. You're beautiful. Don't say that about yourself. You're alive. You woke up. Oh my God, you're alive. It's, it's a reason to celebrate. That's it. That's it. And I think that if every day we we say that about ourselves, you know, maybe you need to change your, your, um, your wardrobe, you know, maybe your wardrobe is three years old and you've either lost weight or you've gained weight. Get rid of the stuff that makes you unhappy. That's 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 huge. That's, that's really, that's, that's huge, Diana. I mean, um, Jose did a, uh, a webinar for us. If you guys haven't heard it, it's out on Connected Women of Influence um, on the web- webinar recordings uh, about your presenting yourself, you know, in, in, in the best light and in the best best way and so forth. And it was, it was a fabulous, fabulous webinar. So shameless sure. plug there for Jose. Thank but you. I used to work for a woman, this was many years ago, and she was she was very tall. I mean, not exceptionally tall, but she's probably about five, nine, five, ten, and was probably a size 18 to 20. This woman showed up every single day, just, I, I mean, she was a classy, classy looking woman. And what she wore was age and size appropriate. And, you know, she would walk into a room and you would go, wow. You know, it was like, um, she looked good. She, I mean, everything about her just showed power and class and savviness and so forth. And that really, really struck with, it it really had an impact on me, you know, young in my career, watching this woman just totally own herself and own her, how she showed up, you know, every day in, in the workplace. And I know, like I said, she probably took Jose's course or something, but well, I think that's where I'm curious, Jose, with you, like, what do you, I mean, what do you suggest to your clients so that are things they can do to kind of more stand in their power? Because, you know, when we get in our head, we get in our head and imagine you get all kinds of conversations with women, but there's a kind of that mindset of I feel frumpy or I don't feel like I'm owning my power. Or I'm not wearing maybe what I should. What are some things you know, we can do, or do you suggest to your clients about kind of owning their power a little differently through how they come across? Well, that's pretty much like what we work on when I work with clients is like really teaching them like how, how to look more, um, polished. So when you, when you look more polished, you instantly feel like more confident, you know, that, you got it together you're you know you can do it and because 
you love the way you look and you know that other people perceive you as such. So I, I think the, like Patty was saying, the webinar really explains it all. Like it has a lot to do. I, I, I teach a lot about quality. Like for me, the quality is like, probably the most important thing. Like a lot of stylists I meet that they're all about colors. I'm all about quality. I think the quality is what will make women um, look more credible and successful and like a, a instantly more credible and like a, a, an expert. So that, that, yeah, that would be my suggestion. Like you need to pay attention to the quality and don't go to Macy's to buy your dresses. That's you just, you have to say that, right? <laughs> you paid to say that? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> you paid to say that? Don't go to Macy's to your dresses. Macy's is not going to be a sponsor of CWI now. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. No, she she actually showed a dress in, in the, the webinar and I told her, I said, I have that dress. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> You don't wear it anymore, do you? No. <laughs> <laughs> but right, Patty, you could tell the difference, right? Yes. When I showed that dress and then when I showed the other dresses, that that's what it, a dress should look like. Yeah. But you know what? The reason it, it, the dress that, that she was talking about was a kind of a wrap uh, dress, which there's nothing wrong with the style of it. It was the no. fabric. The fabric yeah. was was uh, like a nylon-y synthetic kind of thing, you know, which polyester. Po yeah, thank you. Which That's what I call it. The the hundred percent polyester dress from Macy's. Yeah, which meant it was yes. reasonably priced, you know. And yeah. so the style of it was not so bad. It was the mm -hmm. the fabric and so forth, and and yeah, I mean, it was right on. The reason I bought it was the whole hide the hips, you know, hide the this, hide the that. And it, it didn't matter that it didn't really look all that great on me once I <laughs> put it on. <laughs> but the, the thing is that most, like no one at school gets an education on fashion. No one ever is taught anything about it. You learn it from your mom, you, you know, but who says that your mom knows what she's talking about or, or your sister, you know? So most women, they don't know. They just are not educated on, on the subject. Yeah. So I have a lot of education to do. <laughs> <laughs> Let's wrap. The, I want to wrap up this. It's 90% mental for me. It's like, you know, I mean, it's like, when I, I don't know, Monique, how you design when you design because it's like, do, do you ever? Well, I, I, I run on different, I run in a different realm because I, for me, I live every moment. I, I know this is going to sound cliche, but I am telling you the amount of passion I wake up with, with ideas and, and, and things is just crazy. So my, I'm going to leave you with five, my five rules of looking good. Ooh, let's hear it. Okay. Ooh. And, and they're not, and they're, and they're not what you think. Okay. There are get a good night get some sleep take naps women don't sleep enough mm. drink plenty of fluids eat good be happy you have to be happy find happiness wherever it is and the last one and i i i i have told so many women you have to have an orgasm <laughs> one today okay i was gonna say drink more wine but we're gonna go with orgasm okay. <laughs> I am. Um, I actually really agree with those rules. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> okay. I'm telling you. Can you I were, ask you something? Uh, if I understood correctly, Monique, you you make clothes. You I'm a make... fashion designer. I'm a fashion designer. Yes. I'd love to be in contact with you. I don't know if we can get connected somehow. Well, that's, sure. what, that's what we do here, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Both in San Diego, too. And then Billy's yeah. in um, Billy's in L.A. So she does fashionista kind of stuff. And, oh, what, cool. What, what, what is, okay, so I can't Bobby, see your name. Sorry, Bobby, yes, Bobby. Bobby does fashion up in L.A. Yeah. And, and um, Susie, you put a, a, a list of the names with everyone's contact. Um, Patty, do you do that? Ay, perdona, perdona. No. Sí, Patty. 
No, yeah, no, I don't, I don't do that. But you guys are all, if you're members of CWI, you've all got access to the CWI directory. Okay, you okay. Can each other that way. Uh, okay. Can you guys uh, enter like your social media on in the chat so that way you guys can connect over like maybe an Instagram or something like that? Yeah, yeah, do that. Yeah, do that. I'll get right on that for Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> okay for real so you know just to i mean this has been uh this has been a fabulous conversation this is what i was hoping would come out of it you know it i i was um sharing at the very beginning before we we actually kicked off that that what got my brain thinking about this topic was was this article that i saw about macy's releasing these plates speaking of macy's again <laughs> the place we don't buy dresses but they were releasing these plates that had sizing like you know, like you're, you should only eat this much on the plate. And, and I thought this is terrible. This is insane. We need to have a conversation about this in the ladies room. So here we are in the ladies room and we have talked about, you know, our moms and we've talked about the schoolyard and we've talked about our aunts and we've talked about orgasms and we've talked about, you know, all of these various things that, that always come up in the ladies room because that's, that's what we do here, right? Everything is, is, is safe here. Everything is fine here. But I encourage all of you, connect with yourselves. When this video gets posted, make sure you share it out to your network because this is an important conversation. And, and like I said at the beginning, change happens at the grassroots level. You know, So when we modify the way we talk, when we change the way our conversation goes and we model that for others, then, then hopefully, this just continues to build and, and continues to, to grow upon one another. So last comments, last second that anyone wants to throw in their last two cents before we, we exit the, the, uh, the stalls, if you will. <laughs> okay. Stalls? Oh my gosh. I just want to say, I want to say thank you to everybody for their authenticity. I mean, you know, if we can't, discuss and debate and you know dish on like what our opinions are it's like what yeah. are we doing you know I mean, I'm not here to be the yes girl or the answer girl and tell you what you want to hear it's like that this is the real stuff so I like that Patty so thank you yeah yeah good anyone Anybody? else have a last thought I'm gonna go um, think about those five tips now tonight I just want you to know. <laughs> um I I'm think not uh, water. I think <laughs> I think that maybe um, we should probably practice that every time you have like a negative, you want to say something negative about yourself, say something good about yourself, you know? Uh, Ollie, Ollie. Yeah, nice. I love that. I love that. All right, ladies, it has been a pleasure. I am, I'm so glad that all of you joined me in the ladies room and uh, keep an eye out. This will be posted on uh, the CWI, the Connected Women of Influence.com website, uh, probably within the week. And so make sure that you share it with your friends and tell others about what's happening in our online forums, because the more that we have together, the more conversations we have like this, the more that we can really impact change. So thank you again so much for joining me in the ladies room. And I will see you again next time. Thanks so much. Thank All you. Right, bye bye. 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 bye.